Siwis Pacum Parabellum. If you want peace, prepare for war. This ancient Latin adage, also the inspiration for the name of the 9mm round in the third John Wick movie, it perfectly captures a principle which has been borne out by history time and time again. Peace and justice are not established in the world without the threat and use of deadly force. Yeah, and American foreign policy has certainly been guided by this timeless truth. Yeah. Over a hundred years ago, President Theodore Roosevelt famously employed an African proverb saying, speak softly and carry a big stick. Because <laughs> your diplomacy is only as effective as your military. Yeah, that's right. This principle is crucial to understand the next cycle we need to discuss, which is probably the most important cycle of them all in terms of the global impact. Yeah, That's the geopolitical cycle, also known as polarity in international relations. And this has three phases, multipolar, bipolar, and unipolar. Yeah, and this one is pretty straightforward as nations compete with one another for resources, advantage, and dominance. Yeah. So a multipolar season is when multiple nation states are jockeying for position through war and conflict. Eventually, two nations or powers emerge from this conflict, creating a bipolar season. Yeah. Then finally, one nation rises to preeminence to become a great power, creating a unipolar mm -hmm. moment in history. Yeah. So to put that into concrete terms, two geopolitical cycles ago, we saw this play out in colonial Europe with England, France, Spain, Portugal, the Netherlands, among others, vying for dominance. This multipolar season eventually gave way to a bipolar season as nations lost wars and position, leaving just France and England in the running. France, of course, then slipped into moral decay and committed suicide with the French Revolution, leaving England as a unipolar power, bringing relative peace and stability to the entire world. Yeah, and while the sun never set on the British Empire, the Pax Britannica, or the Peace of Britain, ended a century after it began, yeah. as the world slipped back into multipolar chaos with World War I mm. and World War II. Out of those conflicts emerged the USSR and the USA in another bipolar season marked yeah. by the Cold War. Then, the USSR collapsed, and at the fall of communism in the early 1990s, the Pax Americana began, yeah. ushering in a new season of unprecedented mm. peace. Yeah, and what I love is that peace is measurable. Yeah. Uh, worldwide battle deaths peaked at around 23 per 100,000 during the last multipolar season. That dropped to a peak of around 9 per 100,000 during the last bipolar season, then to a peak of 2.5 per 100,000 in the 90s as we transitioned into the unipolarity of America. By the 2000s, it was less than 0 0.25 per 100,000. Historically speaking, the Pax Americana is the most peaceful period the world has ever known. Mm, yeah, and partially because America built the most powerful military the world has ever That's known. Right. America didn't just become a great power. She became the first superpower. Mm. But the Pax Americana didn't just bring unprecedented peace, but also unprecedented prosperity via mm. capitalism. Today, the world has the lowest levels of poverty ever recorded in human history. Yeah. The story of the success of capitalism via the Industrial Revolution is that around the year 1820, about 94% of the world's population lived in poverty. Hmm. Today, that number has plummeted to around 8%. Yeah. What's even more remarkable is the majority of that progress occurred during the Pax Americana. Yeah. But here's where things get interesting. The geopolitical cycle has a massive effect, not just on the world, but on the church as well. Fred Markert, one of the world's leading missiologists and our mentor, began studying all of these cycles and his research overlaid the global growth of Christianity with the geopolitical cycle, leading to a startling conclusion. The church expands and increases during unipolar seasons, but contracts during multipolar and bipolar seasons. Specifically, the church grew from 0 to 20% of the world's population under the Pax Romana, then went into decline after the collapse of the Roman Empire during the following multipolar and bipolar seasons. When the next unipolar season hit under the Pax Mongolica, the church grew from 17 to 24% of the world's population, before again going into decline after the collapse of the Mongolian Empire. Yeah, which brings us back to the latest two cycles we discussed. Yeah. Once the Pax Britannica came 
came along, the church absolutely exploded due to the rise of missions movements. Yeah. This time from 18 to 34 percent of the world's population. Yeah. Despite this momentum, though, she yet again went into decline when the British Empire collapsed. Then the Pax Americana came into place and the church went nuclear, yeah. increasing from 25 to 33 percent of the wow. world's population in just a single decade. Now, that might not sound like a huge leap, but numerically speaking, it was absolutely enormous due yeah. to the global population growth. Yeah, exactly. So to recap, unipolar seasons are the single most beneficial seasons in both world and church history. Yeah. And there's an allusion to this reality in scripture itself. Paul writes in Galatians that God sent Jesus in the fullness of time. This curious phrase goes back to the Hebrew concept of time, a cup slowly filling, waiting for the right moment, a kairos moment. But what made the season Jesus was born in just the right time and the one which God was waiting for? The Pax Romana. Yeah, historians such as Paul L. Meyer detail the alignment of factors here, such as the peace and stability of Rome, their incredible yeah. infrastructure allowing for travel, trade, and mail, the common language adopted, and the vast Jewish synagogue network mm. established throughout the empire, which allowed Christianity to piggyback and spread rapidly. Yeah. Critically, the Pax Romana was one of the longest unipolar seasons in history, mm. giving the church nearly 450 years to spread the gospel. By contrast, the Pax Americana will likely crumble after less than 40 years. Hmm. So unipolar seasons are incredibly beneficial for the world and for the church. But when unipolar powers collapse, it thrusts the world back into a season of war, death, and chaos. This is terrible for everyone, including for the church, as global political stability becomes erratic, travel is greatly restricted, and infrastructure and economies are either destroyed or diverted to the war efforts. Yeah, the historical record is absolutely clear here. If America collapses, the global church will go into decline. Hmm. You know, as Uncle Ben said, with great power comes great responsibility. <laughs> or, you know, as Jesus said, to whom much is given, much is required. There you go. America has been given unprecedented wealth, resources, and ability in this season. Mm. Even more unprecedented is that this is the first generation in history which could mm. actually complete the first part of the Great Commission yeah. and could potentially do so in the next 10 to 15 years. But currently, America is squandering yeah. those resources and opportunities and destroying itself from within, while China and Russia lie in wait. Yeah, it doesn't look like we even have 10 to 15 years left. China right now is chomping at the bit to overthrow us and become the next world superpower. And they're on track to overtake the U.S. in both military and economic power within just the next five to six years. But the reality is the Pentagon and the Department of Defense aren't even sure if we could win an all-out war with China today. And simulations which pit the U.S. against both China and Russia consistently show America on the losing end. Hmm. Yeah, so for the sake of the gospel and for the sake of the world, now more than ever America needs to gird up her loins and parabellum, yeah. prepare for war. But instead, she's decadent and ripe for collapse. I'm reminded of Albert Einstein's warning when he said, I know not with what weapons World War III will be fought, but World War IV will be fought with sticks and stones. Wow. This coming multipolar season will also be unprecedented. The scale of the destruction now possible is unthinkable, but it's coming. And therefore, it could be generations before the church has the opportunity to complete her task again. Unless. Unless. Hey, I'm Josh. And I'm Joshua. Thanks for watching the seventh installment of this series discussing the Pax Americana and our closing window of opportunity. Join us in the next segment as we pivot to our only hope and give some context to spur us into action. Thank you.